Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and welcome to my Warframes Beginner Guide. This is going to be a series of videos that is going to be made for people who are new to Warframe, and I really hope that a lot of people take notice in these videos, because Warframe is a great free-to-play game, and it's a really fun game whenever you get into it and actually learn how the game works and functions, etc, etc. But this is just going to be a beginner's guide, so I'm going to hop straight into the gameplay here, probably with a lot of editing, so then uh, it gets right to the points that you guys want to know, and, you know, Someone who watches this video knows what they're doing while they're playing the game. So you can watch this video beforehand, before playing the game, and then get into the game, and then, you know, just get right in there. So I'm going to be pretty much recording all of this live, and going to be editing it, snipping it in the parts, and that's going to be the video. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, and before the video goes on, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment to ask me what you guys want to know in Warframe, and I'll make sure to put, make a video on it. And welcome to the channel if you're, if you're new, and... I hope you enjoyed the video. So straight after the prologue cutscene, you're going to be introduced with basically what your starter Warframe is going to be. Now you have one of three choices here. You can't choose all of them, you know, don't be greedy. But uh, I'm basically, what I'm going to do is talk you through their abilities and tell you which one I think is best. Now you don't have to choose whichever one I choose. You can make your own approach to this, so you know, stick to your own playstyle. But Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out what the ability does and I'm also going to put a snippet of gameplay from my main account onto like whenever I'm talking about it. So first off we have Excalibur and its first ability is called Slash Dash. Now this is a really really basic ability. You press the button so in this case it will be up on the touchpad for PlayStation 4, one on the keyboard and I don't know what it is in Xbox. You have a power menu and I think it would be X. I think something like that, X or A or B or Y, you know, one of those buttons. And basically what it does is Excalibur dashes forward, making a sword out of his hand and just chops an enemy in half. That's basically what it is. It deals mainly slash damage, so there's three different types of damage in the game, but that's for another video. It deals mainly slash damage and has the ability to cut an enemy in half, and it's very good against squishy opponents. His next ability is called Radio Blind, and this basically turns Excalibur into a human flashbang. So what I mean by that is he holds his sword up, and then it makes a stun effect of all the enemies surrounding him, and they're stunned for a certain amount of time. Very, very good crowd control ability. The third ability is called Super Jump. Basically just propels Excalibur into the air. Very, very basic ability, but this ability is going to be removed from the game and replaced with something else later on, so that's just something to keep in mind if uh, you're watching this later on in Warframe's life cycle. This ability will not exist anymore and it's going to be changed. And the final ability is Radial Javelin. Now what Radial Javelin does is Excalibur will stab the ground and a bunch of swords will come out off the ground and kill all surrounding enemies. Uh, and if they're too high level it will basically do the same as Radial Blind and stun them. Now this ability will be moved to where Super Jump is and it will be replaced by an ability where Excalibur gets the sword in his hand and he's able to basically slash and make like emit energy from the sword and then it's going to chop the enemies in half sort of like that there. And that's just something to keep in mind later on in the life cycle of the game. Next up we have Mag and her first ability is called Pull. Basically what Pull does is it grabs all enemies in the area and pulls them towards Mag, making them ragdoll. Very good crowd control ability, very good for protect, uh, protecting objectives and that things of the sort. Mag's second ability is Shield Polarize. Basically what Shield Polarize does is any enemies who has a shield will explode and it will restore your shields by a little portion, depending on how well your Warframe is built. That's another thing for another video again. Uh, it will restore more shields and deal more damage. Her third ability is Bullet Attractor. This is a very lackluster ability. No one ever uses it on Mag because all of her other abilities are better. But uh, what it does is it makes a big orb around the opponent and any bullets that go in there will automatically hit the opponent and based on the amount of damage dealt, it will explode dealing damage to surrounding enemies. Crush is Mag's final ability and it lifts all enemies near her and basically throws them. A very, very good crowd control ability and it deals decent damage but it's not very good. Third and finally we have Vault. Vault's first ability is called Shock and it basically just you zap a guy with your hand, you 
press the button, zap the guy, and he's stunned for a little while, and it also deals damage. Pretty decent ability. The second ability is called Speed. Speed basically speeds you and your melee speed up, so you're able to attack faster with your melee, and you're able to run faster through the level. Very good for speed running. Uh, if you have the right equipment, you can get a mission done very, very quickly. Bolt's third ability is called Electric Shield, and Electric Shield basically puts a shield in front of Bolt, and you can shoot for it, and it makes your bullets do electric damage, and it also increases the range of your weapon at the time. Bolt's final ability is called Overload, and uh, basically what Overload does is you're going to jump in the air, and any electrical equipment around you is going to explode and chain electric damage to all surrounding enemies. Very good ability for current control. Now what Warframe do I believe to be best? for your starter choice, that is. I would have to say it's between Excalibur and Mag. Basically, the argument for Excalibur is basically he is a Warframe that is very balanced, very well balanced for all factions, so there's different factions in the game, and Excalibur is just an all-around Warframe. He's very good. Uh, his Radio Blind ability is good card control, and Radio Javelin can help you clear a room very, very quickly. Uh, Mag is basically very objective, Sort of Warframe. Her pull ability can pull any enemies off. Say something that you're defending. Shield Polarize is used into the late game very much. So I'd say like level 100 enemies here. You have enough what's called power strength on your Warframe. And that's going to deal tons of damage to all surrounding enemies. And basically restore all your team's shield. Crush is just a good CC ability. As I said, it's not that good. But, you know, if... Right. Uh, basically, if you want a Warframe that is well-rounded for the beginning of the game, you're going to want to choose Excalibur. But if you want something that you're able to jump in the late game straight away with, you're going to want to choose Mag. Now, in my opinion, Mag is a better choice for someone who's going to actually really get into the game. Like, they know what they're doing, and they watch all of my sort of beginner videos, and they want to learn how to get into the game. Mag is definitely going to be the better choice. But if you're just trying the game out, definitely choose Excalibur. And I'm going to be looking at the casual player here, but I'm also going to be looking at the veteran player as well. So I'm going to choose Excalibur for that purpose because he's a very good frame. And, you know, you can sort of, you can experiment with him a lot in the game. So I'm going to choose Excalibur, and we're going to hop straight into the gameplay. Alright, so, straight off, slash dash. <laughs> we cut them in half, so that's pretty cool, right? I'm basically have to do this here to kill all the enemies. If you're playing with mag, you're going to be able to use pull, and just ragdoll them all. But I didn't really explain why you shouldn't choose vault. Vault's just... Vault's a frame that... You basically only use for like one or two types of missions. He's not, not very well rounded and his damage isn't good for layout games, so that's why I don't choose Vault, but you know, if you're just playing casually, I would go ahead and choose Vault if you think he looks cool. An extraction ship is but let's way. go on through here. Okay, maybe not. There we go. Alright, so where I like to choose your melee weapon now, you never choose between the scanner which is a mainly slash damage weapon, because it's a blade, obviously. Or you can choose the bow, which is a impact damage weapon. Now, the difference between this here means that the bow is impact damage, so it's going to make enemies be stunned if you hit them a lot. Basically, it's called a proc. Whenever it procs, it's going to stun them. And slash can sla uh, proc a bleeding effect, which will make, their make them lose health. Now, the slash damage and impact damage does better against a certain type of faction. The impact damage is very good against shielded targets, so they'll be known as the corpus. And the slash is good against fleshy targets, which is known as the infested, or any enemy that doesn't have a shield or armor. So, the Scanna is the better choice. However, the bow is better for moving around. So, I'm just going to show you why the bow is a better choice here. Basically, using your melee weapon to get around is essential in Warframe. So, we have this thing. We can jump, obviously, yeah. Yep, yeah, we can jump. That's all nice. But, what if, say, there is an area that 
that we want to get up to where there's a container. How do we do it? We can't just jump up. We gotta do this. And that propels us into the air a lot further. And based on your melee attack speed, you're going to propel a lot higher, so you know, like that there. And there's this other thing in the game called coptering, where uh, you slide, and then you, so I'll show you, slide, and then press circle, you melee, it's called a copter, and basically that's done to get through the level a lot faster, it's called basically speed running the level, but you do that, and then you can chain them, you know, like that. So that's why the bow's better, because it allows you to move around the levels faster, and it's going to be very, very good for the beginning levels, because you want to get through those very fast. And also, you choose the bow, because you can make an even better weapon after you get rid of this. So that's I have a plan for this beginner series, so if you keep watching it, I'll show you how to get off your feet, or on your feet, off your feet, on your feet, in no time. So go ahead and choose the bow, but a casual player, if you really think the scanner looks cool, Go ahead, choose the scanner. I'm not forcing you to choose the bow, but it's just the better choice, in my opinion. So, we're gonna choose the bow. I'm gonna just copter on free here. It one hits these enemies, but they're only level one, so. So, you see how fast that we're going to be able to get through this. We have to kill all enemies here. Also, the uh, stealth attacks, but ain't nobody got time for that. Let's do this. Okay. So next up we have our melee, or not our melee weapons. Man, I just covered those. We have our secondary weapons and we can either choose the Leto or we can choose the Kunai. Now, the Kunai deal mainly slash damage, but the Leto deals impact damage and obviously you can shoot it faster. So, you know, the gun might seem like the better choice, but basically, as I explained before, slash damage makes them bleed where impact damage just makes them be stunned. So, we're going to choose the kunai because it will make them bleed. So if an enemy has armor, like these enemies do here, if I can look at one. Okay, look at this here guy over here in the air. He has a yellow health bar. That means he has armor. So if the bleeding proc actually procs, if you get what I mean, it's going to eat away at his health and then deal damage over time, which is very good. And that's why I choose the kunai. Also, plans for the future when choosing the kunai. So you don't really have to open up all these containers. They don't really contain that much. But you don't, again, you also don't have to dodge this guy. You can just do what I did right there. And teleport around with a bow is pretty much what you're doing. Again, don't have to fight any of the enemies. Just get to your objective and get it all done. And over with, which it hasn't showed us where the objective is yet, but it's right here. So we just hit that there. And get on free. And there we go. We should be coming up to the primary weapon soon. Should do the wall run, but ain't nobody got time for that. We're just gonna do that. Of course, you can wall run if you like, but. Okay, now we're presented with a bow and arrow or an actual gun. Now you may be thinking, okay, bow and arrow ninja game, makes sense, right? Basically, the bow and arrow deals puncture damage, which is good against armored units, so the guys with the yellow health, but it's not that good against flesh healer units or guys with shields. And even at that, it has a charge up time if you want to deal full damage. So, you know what I mean? It's very good, you're getting high damage numbers with it, but you want to choose this here just because, you know, you can kill a lot more in a short amount of time with it. So that's why we choose this here. I know it doesn't deal as much damage, but it will benefit you greatly later on because you'll be able to take down more enemies later on. I need to turn off vibrations, that's really annoying. But we're just going to keep on traveling and get this prelog done and over with. Hurry, Vor's reinforcements must be on their way. We hacked this console, so this is just a mini game where you have to tap X at the right time. Very straightforward. X or space bar, or I think it's A on Xbox. Don't know, not really that big of an Xbox fan, but you guys should know what it is. Um, basically, we just have to defend the ship now. Nice and easy.
So now that we've defended the ship, we're pretty much done with the prologue, and that's it. Alright guys, well, anyway, thanks for watching part 1 of my Warframe Beginner's Guide. Uh, I hope it helped out a lot and kind of gives you a little look into what Warframe is because of the different damage types, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to make this game really big. It's a free-to-play game, and they update it pretty much monthly, so there's a lot of new content always added into it, and that's why I enjoy the game, because there's always something to do in it, and I never get bored while playing it. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you like this episode of Warframe Beginner's Guide, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.